Shavua Tov, what can we take from this week's parasha, the beginning of Sefer Shmois, with us to give us chizuk in these cold, wintry, frosty days and raining days in Eretz Yisrael. As we mentioned, the Gemara Maseches Yoyim and Daflam and Helmut Beis about Hilva Zoken that was found under a heap of snow. And why was he under a heap of snow? Because there was a guard. And not only there was a guard, there was a guard that was charging to enter into the base of Midrash. What kind of business is that? This is not a mikveh. Why is it that there is a charge? First of all, why is there a shoymel? The Ma'al Shah. There, Maseches Yoyimah says this question. He says, I don't understand. Why is there a shoymel, a guard? He says, maybe it's because it was in those days, the Bata Midrash, the study halls were in the fields. And it was dangerous that they needed a guard. But I was thinking of a different explanation. We say, Im tevakshena kakesef. This is a pasuk that is actually quoted in many of the old Gemaras. It used to be, I don't know why in the new Gemaras you don't always find it. Sometimes you do. Is that there's verses, psukim that you say, that give us an idea of how to study Torah. How to seek Torah. It says, Im tevakshena kakesef, based on Shlomo Melech, the wisest of all men. He says, if you seek it like money, like treasures, you're searching for it. As Then you'll understand what it means to be God-fearing. Then you'll understand what it means to be in awe of Hashem. That means, so I was thinking of a simple explanation, they charged, not because they were trying to make money in the base Middash, because they were trying to bring out this point that in order to come into the base Middash, a person has to want it and has to feel like it's it's, there's nothing more valuable. All the money in the world, like the Mishnah Pirkei says, doesn't live up to one little kutzay shel yud, the top of a yud, the crown of a yud in the Torah. There's so much, there's so much. I was leaning on Shabbos Kodesh. And Baruch Hashem in this amazing show, I have this show sometimes, I'm leaning three times, and I was in Mamsh Kodesh. I felt like I was there. I started almost crying. Why well, I don't know. I was in the Shibud itself. I was in Mitzrayim. But then I was thinking of all the amazing drushes my son is learning Masecha Saita. Every little letter and word is hinting to another remez and another secret and another amazing treasure that could give us insight and wisdom. Amazing. And that is how a person is supposed to come into this week. Yes, we have to work and we have to take care of our body and all the physical things that we need to do. But our goal, our goal is every second to think, how can I get more to you? How can I connect more to wisdom? How can I learn Pirkei Ovis and know it by heart? And when I'm walking or I'm in the streets or I'm at work and I'm taking a break, I'm reviewing. This is what the Nefesh Chaim says. The Nefesh says, Chaim Velazhni says that when it means that a person should be working and uh, and then learning means there's time for work and there's time for learning. He means that when you're working, you should also still review. And in the old days it was easy. While you were cutting with your sickle, the, uh, the wheat, it was possible to review uh, Pirkei Alves. Today it's very difficult when you're on the computer or on the phone to do such a thing. So we don't have that opportunity. But that's the key. And let's add another amazing, amazing, amazing insight about Moshe Rabbeinu. When I was leaning, I was thinking, poor, wow, Moshe Rabbeinu. What an interesting uh, start. He grows up in the king's palace. First of all, he gets in trouble, he's fighting with other Jews, other of his brothers, they're, they're already saying Lashon Hara about him. And then finally, God himself tries to convince him to, to do his job of saving the Jewish people, and he gets a little bit involved. First he says, I can't do it, then he gets involved, and what happens? Everyone complains. Everyone says, you only made things worse. Amazing, a leader. Moshe Rabbeinu, if he was normal, quote-unquote, if today a person would be going, they say, forget it, I'm giving up. Says Moshe Rabbeinu, I'm not giving up. You know why? Because there's a famous story. This is quoted in the Tifel Sisel and in the Shittim Akubetis and the Dorim, and it's also from the Baal Shem Tov. So they certainly give credence to this famous Midrash. It was a, it was a Midrash that we don't have in writing, but it's quoted that there was a king that, was, that heard about Moshe Rabbeinu, and he sent an artist, and the artist came back with a beautiful picture of Moshe Rabbeinu, but it showed the king was an expert in seeing Tzuras upon him, being able to tell the traits of a person based on the face, the picture, and he looked, and he said, it can't be Moshe Rabbeinu, and he, and he got the guy killed. Why? Because it can't be. It must have been a false, false picture. He sent another guy, came back with the same thing. Finally, the king went and saw Moshe Rabbeinu, and saw he looks like he's a person that has such thickness, such negativity, his traits, what's going on. And even though the Pasuk says that when he was born, he was toiv. So Moshe Rabbeinu said, you should know. Toiv, good, doesn't mean you're born perfect. Toiv means the exact opposite. You are able to take the achirus, it's called, the cloudiness of the body, the cloudiness of the traits, 
and try to convert it. And if you were successful one day, like the Chavetz Chaim says, never plan it a week, one day at a time. How much can I work on my trait today? And that's a success. Moshe Rabbeinu, the greatest leader of all times, had to teach us this lesson. That's Zachan.